In this video, I'm going to do a quick comparison of the E-mini S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. And I want to tell you why I've, you know, talk to you more about why I've decided, okay, uh, I do think I need to switch over to the uh, E-mini S&P, the S&P 500. So I'm just going to highlight similar structures to you. So first, let's talk about, let's talk about the open that we had on Friday. So here on the left hand side, the left is the uh, S&P and the right hand side is the NASDAQ and I'm on a 10 minute chart. So as you can see, all right, the structures are basically the same, right? But um, you can see that the, the, the S&P 500, okay, does it have its wicks? Yes, it does. But look at the, the NASDAQ, right? This thing wicks down 30, 30 points. Now, just so you know, that's $2 a point. That's $60. That's a wick down. That is a wick down $60, okay? Look at that, right? It's, uh, it's more a liquid. It doesn't have as many stocks in it. It doesn't have as much money coming in it. So the, the, the damage... You know, you have to read the candle bodies. You can't read the, you cannot read the candle wicks. The wicks are not are not quote unquote important. The, they do the damage. The bodies of the candles are important, which is why you want liquidity in your marketplace. You want the market to be very liquid so that you can easily or more easily read what the price action is doing. So. We take a look at just the opening, the opening range here, the AM session between the ES and the NASDAQ. Every single candle is a dramatically long wick on the NASDAQ. And yeah, are there wicks here in the S&P 500? Yeah, there are. But notice that, all right, it's not as wicky. It's not as illiquid as the NASDAQ is. Okay, They're, the candle bodies make up a greater percentage of the candles. Whereas here, every single candle is a very long wick. And they do a lot of damage. There's a reason why Michael says that they do damage, because they do a lot of damage. Um, and, and it's just difficult to know where to place your stop losses on the NASDAQ, as I've found over the past few weeks, because uh, it will just come and tag you and then turn around. It's just uh, very been very frustrating. Now, also notice, okay, let's zoom out a little bit. All right, let's talk about your liquidity targets or aiming for old highs, aiming for old lows. Okay, and then let's let's look at which one is easier to read. Here are your old highs on the E-mini S&P 500. Okay, and I will also circle them. Now notice, what do you see about those highs? Those are very easily visually spottable, right? But you can tell where the buy side liquidity was located. Do you have the similar structure on the NASDAQ? Sure, you do. But look, there was a 30-point wick. 30 points is a lot, guys. I mean, that's a full trade in and of itself. That's a lot. And you would be on the wrong side of the marketplace as the market was drawing higher. So every single candle is a long wick. Now, do we have wicks here on the E-mini S&P 500? Yes, but they're not... So that 30-point candle, that was 6 points on the NASDAQ. So uh, that would be $30 instead of $60 of wick, of damage. That's a lot less, right? So that same exact wick that we had on the NASDAQ, we had in the E-mini, that would have been $60 on the NASDAQ. It was only $30 on the E-mini S&P 500. And so in terms of risk management, you can see that the, the ES is just not um, as illiquid. Let's scroll a little bit higher. Let's scroll a little bit higher. Now look, clean, a much cleaner move down on the E-mini S&P 500. I mean, look, look at that. Every single candle is a long wick on the NASDAQ. Every single one is a long wick.
Okay. I'm just showing you a comparison. This one was a little bit, the, actually the NASDAQ was a little bit cleaner um, at this exact juncture. I'm not going to lie to you, it was definitely cleaner at this exact point. So I'm just showing you a comparison of the two instruments at about the same sort of levels. And I can just tell you that I would have a much easier time reading those equal highs, that high right there, that fair value gap. A lot easier to read on the E-mini S&P 500, I think. Uh, there was a fair value gap up here as well. Scrolling through the, the comparison. So the candle bodies on the E-mini S&P 500 are, they make up a greater percentage most of the time than the NASDAQ does of the candle. Also, you're lowering your risk by your trading the E-mini S&P 500 as it does not fluctuate as much. So you are lowering your risk and frankly, you, you know, that's what I have to do. Okay, showing you more uh, of the same structure. So you can see that the E-mini S&P 500, instead of doing a very long wick here, right, making you think it was going to draw down further lower, that was another 30 point wick. We had candle bodies here on the E-mini S&P 500. That would be a big difference in terms of reading what the market is doing. Having these candle bodies instead of a wick uh, would, would make a significant difference. Because you don't read the wicks, you read the candle bodies. Okay, so I'm showing you the same price structures on the E-mini S&P 500 on the left and the NASDAQ on the right, same sort of time. And this, right you're seeing that you know that the market's gonna gonna draw if it's down here you know it's aiming at that this is a little bit less clear like the highs are a little bit more separated from one another they're not a, they're not really at the exact same price um, and of course you know here was a 22 point wick now do you have a similar wick here yeah okay so that was a four and a half point wick so this was a $20 wick, okay, $5 a point. This was a $20 wick. This was a $40 wick. It's twice as much of a wick in terms of the dollar amount. And you think it doesn't matter. It matters a lot That's because it's happening all the time. Um, that's a $42 wick, and this is a $20, uh, $20 wick, okay? So it makes a big difference. It's a $22.5 wick, and that's a $44 wick. It's twice the wick in terms of the dollar amount. And then these these flat highs here, I could tell you that the market was going to draw up and take out those highs. Like, at some point, like those highs were going to get taken out. That, that was for sure. A little bit less clear on the NASDAQ. Of course, it did the same thing in hindsight, but I'm just telling you that if it were happening live, that would be harder to read. Whereas I could easily tell you, oh, yeah, those are flat highs. That's 100%. Those are getting taken out. Okay. Uh, here we're seeing the same comparison. You can see, all right, do they visually look very similar? Yes, but flat highs here on the E-mini S&P 500, and we just rip through, rip through that buy side. We rip through it on the Nasdaq, and that would make you think this structure right here. That would make you think that the Nasdaq was drawing higher. So again, it's kind of like, ugh. This right here, that was all stopping at a rejection block. And if the market turned around like that, even if I were in a long position at that time, thinking it would take out those highs, I promise you I'd reverse that and get on the right direction of the market. So, showing you more examples. Okay. So, here we have a wick, the same wicks. $4, sorry, that's a $10 wick on the micro ES, $10 wick. And that's a $32 wick on the NASDAQ. Okay. $40 wick on the NASDAQ. Uh, $15 wick, or about $18 wick on the E mini SP 500. And guys, what you have to remember is that this candle right here was once a loud and proud 
green candle that looked like it was going to draw back up into buy side. You have to understand how these candles actually print. If it's a this looking candle right here, at one point that was a big fat green candle. And if you're reading the market as it's happening live, that can easily fool you guys. It just can. It fools me all the time. So you don't want to have the wicks do a lot of damage like they make it so much harder to read price than when than candle bodies candle bodies are easy they're easy Um, so, showing you similar price structures. All right, that's a $34 wick. That's a $13 wick, $15 wick, so twice as much of the wick. Okay, similar structures here on the uh, E-mini S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I'm just going through the comparison. This was pretty similar, um, but you can see that, see a little bit of differences. Okay, so here's, here's the comparison between the two at this point. That this would have been pretty obvious to me that fair value gap right there I could absolutely have seen that that I would have picked up on that okay all right here's similar structures on the NASDAQ and the mini S&P 500 at this example, actually, the NASDAQ was a little bit cleaner over here. That was the S&P 500. That was the same thing on the NASDAQ. So, you can spend some time studying the comparison between the NASDAQ and the E-mini S&P 500. Again, guys, obviously it's mostly similar, right? But it's those subtle differences and at the extremes. Notice here, okay, I'm going to highlight this price action versus this price action. Guys, when you're reading the market live, this is a lot harder to read than this. This is pretty easy to read. I mean, that's that's a breaker block right there. That's a low, high, lower, low.
Um, so you can see similar price structures, right? That that's a lot easier to read. I'm just telling you that that's a lot easier to read than this. Okay, similar price structures here on the Nasdaq and the E Mini. Now that that was a pretty substantial wick, but um, there you go. There's similar price structures on the. Okay, similar price structures. That is about this is about the same on the uh, the E mini S and P five hundred and the Nasdaq. You can see that this price structure is about the same. I would tell you that generally speaking, I could easily more easily read this than this. That's more easy to read than that. Just it just is. So okay. Uh, similar structures here on the E mini S P five hundred on the left and the E mini Nasdaq on the right. Um, so you can see that climb higher. It looked basically the same on both products. Um, I think that so again, the reason why I'm saying I kinda like what the ES looks like, that's a lot easier. Like you know that's probably getting ran. All those lows. I mean, yeah, okay, so you know what? Very similar on the NASDAQ, I will say that. But you can see that the NASDAQ, I mean, it was trying to quickly take out some short-term buy side liquidity, and ES didn't really make the same length of run in the opposite direction. Okay, now here's, here's a pretty substantial difference. I'm looking at the same price structures here on the E-mini S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. This is the same exact time, uh, the same exact structures, right here as with right here. And uh, you can see the NASDAQ, boy, that was difficult. This would be a lot easier to read. I mean, you could see like, all right, trading back into this bullish order block back here, come out, test it twice, go higher, take out the short-term buy side. The NASDAQ, ooh, that was really nasty. Not nearly as nasty on the on the e mini S&P 500. Not nearly as nasty. So that was a big difference. Um, okay, similar structures here on the NASDAQ, but notice that the ES made a higher low and the NASDAQ made a lower low. So that was a smart money uh, divergence. Um, that would be pretty easy to see that the market would want to take that out. This is a lot harder to, like, single highs are a lot less obvious than multiple highs, if that makes sense to you. Like, they're a lot harder. So. All right. Going through similar structures here on the e mini S&P 500 and the NASDAQ um, with the ES on the left, NASDAQ on the right. Again, you got to also look at like what the actual dollar value of this is. That wick right there, that is seventy-five dollars. It's eighty. It's almost eighty dollars. Like seventy, um, seventy-seven dollars, and that is thirty dollars. So again, twice as much of a wick in terms of actual dollar values as the E mini S and P five hundred. And it matters, guys. And and it's part of risk management, basically, trading the right product. So, okay. Similar structures here on the E mini S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I'd say that was a pretty clean move down on the NASDAQ, in all fairness. That this was a pretty clean move down, although you could see it on both. 
Okay, guys, and this was the start of uh, August. August's trading. So we're just coming up to the top of August. And, okay, this is nasty, right, on both sides. That's very nasty price action on both products. It's just nastier on the NASDAQ is all. Uh, in terms of your dollar values, you know, it made a new high on the NASDAQ, did not make a new high on the ES. So that would be more, you know, it would give you a better sign that the market was probably going down when you make a lower high and stop at the consequent encroachment of that wick rather than making a higher high. If you make a higher high and you start closing above that prior high, you think, oh, we're probably drawing higher. No, 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 we were drawing lower. So, again, similar structures here on the NASDAQ. But the NASDAQ actually took out both sides of the book, where the ES only took out the buy side and then it stopped at the sell side. So we see that. So, you know, is it is it a massive difference? Right? I'm going to be honest with you. It's not a massive difference, but over time, it, it matters. And this is why I've decided to move away from the NASDAQ and move to the ES, because if August is going to be tough trading, if August is going to be illiquid in both markets and make a lot of candle wicks instead of bodies, that's fine, but I'd rather be on the more liquid product than the less liquid product. Um, and I'd like to limit my risk uh, more and you can limit your risk more trading the ES than you can the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is more illiquid. The ES is much more liquid. It's the most liquid futures market in the world, the, the E mini S&P 500. So, okay. All right. Well, that's going to be the end of this comparison, guys, and another, you know, reasons why I'm switching to the uh, ES. Bye bye.